we now present another episode in a radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Harry H. Corbett as Harold. I don't know how to put up with him. He can't even carry on a normal conversation. He's not sitting on that skinny backside, moaning it's all bingo and threatening trebles and boozing at the skinner's arms. I know which way my destiny lies. And it ain't got nothing to do with woolen rags and brass bedsteads. And with Wilfred Bramble as Albert. What's he got to grouse about, I'd like to know. To listen to him, you'd think trotting wasn't an ancient and honourable profession. Always on about no time for golf and tennis and keeping fish. He, he can have a nice game of darts at the boozer. What about that lovely open air life out every day on the cart? And here they are in The Bonds That Bind Us. In, out. In, out. In, out. Oi, Spartacus! Oh, 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 thou come bursting in here when I'm working with dangerous apparatus. I nearly did myself a mischief then. Chest sticks, pandas, yeah. What do you want to mess about with all that laugh for? You'll never have any muscles. In, out. In, out. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of an healthy mind in an healthy body? Healthy mind? You? <laughs> I'm just taking precautions against running to fat. I'm at a very dodgy age. My physique could slip away just like that. And if the alternatives are to become obese or to disintegrate like you, I'd rather carry on with what I'm doing. <laughs> Hey, what's in this box? I bought a medieval collection. They're torture implements. A few thumb screws, knuckle dusters, foot stretchers. There's a couple of head squeezers, things like that. They might come in useful. You never know. <laughs> the grisly things you bring home. What's this? Now, don't tell me you got a straight jacket. That's not medieval. Anyway, what's the good of a straight jacket? There was a job lot. A lady on the round. She was having a clear out. Corn, Bennett, look at this. A cat of nine tails. The things that go on behind the lace curtains of suburbia. <laughs> Come on, give us a hand with these. Give you a hand with what? You know what. The first of the month, the Ernie Winners is out. I'm not breaking up my exercises for your Ernie Winners. Continuity of rhythm is very important. I've got five dozen to do with these. Besides, you never won anything, why bother? Well, it's always the first time. Oh, that is not bad. Yeah, looking at himself in the oh, mirror. Yes, that is coming along very nicely. Well, did you see, look, look at that, did you see that? Oh, look, look, oh, the pectorals are doing well. <laughs> oh, yes, a light sheen of oil over that and I'd be a sensation down at the camera club. Yeah, yeah, great, Jesse. Stop looking at yourself in the mirror. Come on, read these numbers out while I check them. Here we go, first of the month ritual again. Uh, I've got a feeling this month. Yeah, you've got a feeling every month. <laughs> you stand about as much chance of winning as you have for being picked for the Olympic Games. Uh, somebody's got to win it. You'll never win that as long as you've got a hole in your trousers. Just mate. read it <laughs> Shut up. Right. Here we go then. Eyes down for the full house. Four or five a thousand pounds. And the first a lucky winner of this a week. Uh, the first number out of the machine belongs to that international gambler and dilettante, Diamond Jim Steptoe. Ha! Cut out the funny stuff and read out the numbers, will you? Oh, hello, hello. We're getting a bit tense, sir. The nerves on edge, are they? The old palms sweating a bit. What has happened to those nerves like piano wires? Oh, they haven't snapped, have they? This is the man who won £5,000 on the turn of a card at Crockford. Will you read out the numbers? Here, give me the paper, I'll do it myself. No, 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 we mustn't be impatient. And it is A, Abel, B, a Baker, 3, 4, 8, 7, 5, 6. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Hey, B. Hey, B. Hey, B. Oh, God, it'd be much easier if you bought them in blocks. I can't afford blocks. I have to buy them one at a time. Oh, it's horrible to watch. This something for nothing morality. I mean, this isn't what made Britain great. We're not going to conquer new empires with this sort of thing going on. Once a month, the entire nation transformed into a flabby mass of greed, crazed inertia, all scrambling through their little bits of paper. Are there no causes left? Has everything been done? Is this the promised land? I ain't got any ABs. What's the next one? He's not listening. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm not involved in it. Healthy body, healthy mind. Oh, Sparta, Sparta, that was the place. <gasps> Exercise, that is the thing. Knees bend, hop, knees bend. Oi, what's the next one? <laughs> Look, I'm not going through them all like that. You call them out, I'll tell you if they're here. Yeah. TK476291. Now, oh, England, when will you get a leader worthy of you? QP915738. Now... I don't think you realise it, Father. The Chinese are on the move. 2AK857462. 2AK, yes. Of course, the West has got flabby. I mean, that is the trouble. 8-5. 8-5, yes. It's outlived its usefulness. I mean, it's all gone. 7-4. 7-4, yes. It's worn out to feet. There's too much indulgence. That is the trouble. 62. 62, yes. We're just a tatty imitation of the Roman Empire, we are. Satiated, <laughs> undermined by soft living... <laughs> What did you say? I said yes. Here, here, here. Let us see that paper. Jaded, that is the word. Oh, it's all too easy. When you can see it in the faces all around you, they're purposeless, aimless. Nobody knows where they're going. That's how it's quid. We're trapped in a pleasure-seeking, hedonistic, wallowing Five society. It's a terrible prospect. I've won a thousand quid. What hope is there? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Harold, I've won a thousand quid. Half it's mine. We agreed that it's the other was one. The other one would have half of it. We did, didn't we? Now, you can't go back on your words. We bought those between us. Are you sure? Sowers? So we're rich. We're rich, Dad. We're rich, we're rich, we're rich. We're Give rich. me that bond, it's mine. No, not all of it, I No, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you're not getting a penny this. You give me back that bond. You get back to your barbell. I own half those bonds. No, you did. You sold your half last year. Who did? You did, when you wanted to join the tennis club. You said you'd rather have the money, so you got it. All oh, these is mine. I'll buy my ten back again. I'm not selling. Here you are. Ten pounds. Oh, I don't want your ten pounds. I've got a thousand coming. Ah, oh, a bargain's a bargain. Oh, Dad, I was desperate for money at that time. You took advantage I of didn't. me. I didn't. You said Ernie but 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 were daft, and you didn't want anything to do with him. I'm sorry, Harold. It's the principle of the thing. When you sell your chance, you sell it. If it was the other way around, I wouldn't expect it from you, Harold. I wouldn't ask it either. All oh, right, keep your money. I'm going to. I wouldn't touch your rotten, stinking money. You're not getting a chance. You disgust me. Well, see what it's done to you already. It is destroying you. You ain't even got it yet, and already it's corrupted you. It's turned you against your own son. Your only son. I've never seen you like this before. And I tell you, Dad, it, it, it's horrible to watch. <laughs> You're ugly inside. Ugly. 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 Harold. I am going to bed. Harold, I'll give you 50 quid. Don't insult me, Father. I cannot be bought. Keep your money. As you rightly say, it's all yours. I'm very happy for you. I hope you enjoy it. Well, I was thinking of having a good old spend-up. Yes, you do that. You've worked hard. I mean, you deserve it. If that's what you want, then so be it. You spend your ill-gotten gains. Good night, Father. I just hope we don't lose each other. Completely. Waist, 29 and a half. 29 and a half. Inside leg, 28 and a quarter. 28 and a quarter. <gasps> Do you mind? Nice pattern, isn't it? It's very smart, sir. Turn-ups, I fancy. Oh, yes, they always have turn-ups. Useful for keeping me fag ends in. <laughs> wider, please. Open wider. <laughs> yes, 
I think we can fit you up very nicely. Uh, you can rinse now. Uh, in the bowl, if you don't mind. Mm. <laughs> I've never had my hair styled before. Oh, 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 the blue rinse makes all the difference, sir. <laughs> Would you care for a manicure while you have the friction, sir? If I can have that red-headed bird over there. <laughs> sir? Odette, <laughs> attend to this gentleman, please. Oh, yes. That is very good. He, he's always wanted a sewing machine. S saves all that darning. Dad? Dad? It's all right. I've unloaded the car and put the horse away. You can come out now, Dad. Oh, yes. Of course. He's rotten, filthy, stinking money arrived today. I suppose he's down the post office. <coughs> oh, oh. Oh, good evening. I'm sorry. Can I help you? I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> Blind O'Reilly. <laughs> Dad, it can't be. Hello, son. <laughs> what have they done to you? Don't keep flashing that eyes and teeth routine at me. How do I look? Like a perishing tailor's dummy. Where'd you get all that? I've been up west. Well, I can see you didn't get all that gear down the market. I went in a taxi. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah, I've been spending some of my money. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot. <laughs> You're a rich man now, aren't you? Yes, it's very nice. Very nice indeed. Suit's nice, isn't it? Could be his clothes. Come on, feel it. And made as well. Best suit I ever had. Sixty quid it cost me. Oh, yes. What do you think of the barnet? I've had a razor cut and blow waves. <laughs> Very attractive. Lovely lotion, too. Hey, have a smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got some new choppers as well. Look, not national elves. Good, aren't they? <laughs> oh, my God. The ivory poachers have struck again. <laughs> He said he didn't know how I kept the last lot in. Really? I'm going back. And he's going to put some fillings in them now. Make them look more real. He's very artistic. Fillings in false teeth? <laughs> it's decadent, that's what it is. It's decadent. It's 75 quid, they cost me. You didn't buy Rolls Royce while you was Don't up there, did you? Duh, I only won a thousand. I've got a silk shirt. Uh, I've ordered three and a Christian Dior tie. I've got six of them coming uh, and two other suits. Different style, of course. Oh, of course. Tweeds, you know, for country wear. Mm. I thought I might go down to Ascot one day. I thought you might have put some of it into the post office. Well, I thought about it and then I thought, no, I thought. Just enjoy yourself for a change. You only live once, don't you? Some of us do. <laughs> Cigarette? That case is gold, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Got me initials on it. Look, lovely shop outages, isn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, I wouldn't shop anywhere else, personally. Oh, yes, I mean, you can often see my awesome cart parked outside. <laughs> I mean, popping in and out all the time, I am. Oh, yeah. I mean, I bought me last week out there. How do you like it? It's all hand-torn. <laughs> You sound annoyed. Annoyed? No, 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 I'm, I'm not annoyed. It's just... Well, don't come in here flaunting yourself in front of me. I'm not interested. We all know you come into some money, but don't show off to me. I don't want to know. If you want to spend it, don't tell me about it. And a word of advice. Throw the walking stick away. It makes you look old. <laughs> You're jealous, aren't you? Well, it's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? I mean, a silly old twit like you, done up like an elderly dress designer. I mean, well, it looked better on me, that is all. When I think of what I could do with that money, but well, now you have to waste it, frittering it away on punching yourself up. Yeah, and I'm having a good time doing it. I've waited a long time for this, and I ain't stopping till I've spent it all. Where are you going now? I'm going back up to town. I'm going to stay at a hotel for a few days. A posh one. 
and I'm going to restaurants and nightclubs. I'm going to have a good time. I was going to take you out to dinner, but if that's the way you feel about it, you've had it. Now look, Dad, leave some of your money here. Don't take it all with you. It'll all be nicked. I shall leave it with the hotel manager to keep in his safe. Good night, Harold. But, Dad, I ain't got any money. I mean, I bought this sewing machine today and a lot of other stuff. Um, here's a fiver. Don't waste it. Oh, uh, and before I go, you might like these. What's this? My old clothes. <laughs> what do I want them for? Oh, well, you're still in the business, aren't you? Three and a half pounds of assault of drags there. I don't want anything for them. Whatever you get, you can keep. Where's the best place to uh, stay up west? There's a good view of the river from the Savoy. Where do you normally stay when you're in town? I think you'd better go. You don't want to get blood all over that nice new suit, do you? Temper, temper. Don't work too hard. Pip, pip, old thing. <laughs> Oh, Bertie and Bertie, I'll Don't think I'm going to forget this, Bertie, because I'm not. I mean, that money won't last forever, and you come crawling back here when it's gone, and your life won't be worth living. I'll have you up in the morning so early, it won't be worth your while going to bed. I'll work you to death. I'll run you into the ground. You wish you were the horse by the time I'm finished with you. Oh, 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 God. Kill, kill, kill. Oh, what a lousy, stinking mess. Still, I'm not cleaning the place up, and it can stay like it till it comes back. I suppose he's sitting in the silver grill somewhere, filling his guts. There'll be waiters hovering all round him. Oh, he'll enjoy that all right, yes. All servile, yes, sir. Now, sir, are the earth's Benedictine two sirs liking? Is the Chambolet Musigny at the right temperature? <laughs> oh, why is it always the old people who win all the money? That's not right. What's that burning? Hello, son. Ah, you come back. Oh, it's your cigar, is it? I thought it was something horrible in the stove. I oh, see. Spent all your money, I suppose. Well, you can get all that clobber off and get stuck into them dishes. There's five days washing up out there. Oh, well. I haven't come back. Not yet. I just popped in to see how you was getting on. Oh. Oh. I'm all right. Thank you. You need not have bothered. I'm managing very nicely on my own. Thank you. I hadn't noticed your absence, quite frankly. I bought you a present. It's an electric razor. No, thanks. I don't want any presents from you. Anyhow, I prefer soap and water, thank you. Harold, I'm trying to be nice. It's a bit late for that, ain't it? The razor was a sort of a peace offering. I am not interested. Oh, would you forgive me while I have my dessert? I will not insult you by offering you prunes out of my tin. <laughs> Harold... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry you still feel this way. Only, I've got somebody outside I'd like you to meet. Oh? friend of mine. Oh. Who is it? The Duke of Bedford? <laughs> Prince Charles? No, uh, it's a lady. It's not her. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's Madge. It's who? Madge. Uh, hang on a minute. Madge? It, it's all right for you to come in now, love. No, oh, thanks. Uh, Madge, uh, this is me son, Harold. Uh, Harold, this is Madge. Oh, so you're Harold. Albie's told me so much about you, haven't you, Albie? Albie? <laughs> Would that be you? <laughs> uh, that, that's what Madge calls me. I could think of a more apt name. <laughs> well, now, uh, uh, would you like to sit down, Madge? Let me dust a chair for you. Oh, I wouldn't bother, Dad. I expect she's been in dirtier places than this. No, I don't think I have. 
You didn't tell me you lived in a place like this, Alby, darling. Oh, uh, I, I don't. I live at the Savoy when I'm in town, that <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, 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 what did you like to drink? Uh, sweetie. Ooh. Shall I leave you two lovebirds alone? No, then? no, no, son. Uh, we, uh, we've got something to tell you, but let's celebrate first. Get a magic drink, Harold. Certainly. Here you are. How about a nice brown ale? <laughs> what would you like, Father? I suppose you do have glasses in here. Yeah, uh, give Madge a glass, Harold. Oh, does she want a glass? <laughs> well, this one's a bit dirty. Only he ain't been home lately to do the washing up. <laughs> so it's only had gin in it. So you won't mind that, will you? Stick it up your kilt. Oh. oh no, no, no. <laughs> Albie? I'll be telling him why we've come and let's get out of this hole. Well, well, well go well, on. Are you going to tell him or not? <coughs> well, you see, you see uh, Harold, it's... Oh, like mind this. out. Uh, Look, you see that? You see that on my finger? Although I don't suppose you can tell a real diamond when you see one. It's an engagement ring. Your dad and I are engaged. Engaged? Oh, gold. <laughs> yeah. I asked her this afternoon, and she said yes. Oh, I expect she did. It's not often a, a bird of her age gets proposed to. Now, now, Sonny Jim, that's no way to speak to your future mummy. Oh. <laughs> We've agreed on a sort of trial engagement. We're going to Monte Carlo tomorrow for holiday to see if we're compatible. <laughs> to see what... Oh, that'll be nice for her, won't it? I mean, that should cost you a few, Bob. And, of course, she'll need all new dresses and everything, won't she? I mean, she can't go down there looking like that, can she? Look, you are out of your gut! Well, put that muffle down. No, 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 no. Don't get upset. I, I told you it'd be funny, didn't I? Let me have a word with him. We'll soon sort it out. Into the kitchen, you. You will excuse us, won't you? Now then, now you shut up and listen now, to me. Now, now, now shut up. You... Five days on your own, and this is what happens. Where did you pick up that old slag for good fight? <laughs> Maggie's not an old slag. Where did you pick her up? What shop window was she advertising in? I met her in a club in Soho uh -huh. three nights ago. She was lonely, and I was lonely, and then we saw each other. It's been what you call a, a whirlwind courtship. Oh, God. I know what you were thinking, but you're wrong. She wasn't like all the other girls in there. Oh, blimey. What were the others like, then? <laughs> How much have you spent on her? Mind your own business. Look, Dad, she's after your loot. She's only interested in what she can get out That's of you. That's not true. She, she said she'd marry me. Oh, that was to get the ring. That's how they work, Dad. Now, look, I don't want to be cruel, but she wouldn't marry you in a month of Sundays. How old is she? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Ask yourself, what's a bird of twenty-seven marrying an old twit of sixty-six for? <laughs> if it's not for the gelt. She prefers older men. Well, of course she does. They're more simple. <laughs> but think, Dad, think for God's sake, think. Look, she's got the ring, which she won't get back. She'll have the trip to Monte Carlo. Whatever you buy her in the meantime. Oh, look, Dad, do I have to spell it out? You'll be engaged for as long as your money lasts. How much you got left? About 500. 500? If I went out there and told her that's all you've got left, you wouldn't see her backside for dust. Look, Dad, you're going to get hurt, and I don't want to see that. Oh, look at the difference in your ages. I mean, it wouldn't work anyway. 27 and 66. Ugh, ugh. Look, I'm telling you, Dad, if you marry her, you'll be dead in six months. <laughs> Yeah. What a way to go. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, if you're going to be coarse, if you won't see what she is, I'm going to have to prove it to you. Look, I'm sorry about this, Father, but you'll thank me for it after. Come here. Ooh, let me go. What are you doing? Ow! I'm sorry, Dad, but drastic ills calls for drastic cures. Take that handkerchief away from my mouth. Don't talk about it. It's time to keep you quiet just for a bit. I mean, this is hurting me more than it is hurting you. <laughs> yeah, you didn't think that straight jacket was going to come in so handy, did you? <laughs> now, yeah, that's better. Now, now, a bit of realism, a bit of shaving soap round the mouth. Oh, yes, that'll do nicely. I'm sorry, but we must have foam on the lips. No, really, I'm sorry, Peter, but it's for your own good. Now, what else have we got? Uh, thumb screws? No, I don't want them. A garret? No. Ah, oh, yes. 
A neck piece on a chain. That's a very pretty little piece on you, Daddy. Now we'll just fasten it round this water pipe. Yes. That is very effective. Right. Now, listen to this. Dad! Dad! Control yourself! Oh, Dad, Dad, Dad! Calm down, Dad! Father, please, I'll beg of you. Come, Dad! Please, calm down, Dad! Father, What's going please. on in there? Don't come in. It's not a pretty sight. Oh, my God, what's that? It's him, your LB. Oh, I wish you hadn't seen him like this. He's had another attack. Oh, he's broken another mouth. Yeah, I know he is. I was right, he was going to have another one when he left home. I saw the new moon and I thought, this is it. Well, what are we going to do? I'll have to phone the police. Police? Why? Well, all this money he's been spending, all these clothes and that ring. Well, it's not his money, is it? Mm -hmm. Is it? No, he's nicked it. Mm -hmm. He always does. Mm -hmm. Look, you look after him while I go and find the police. I am not getting involved with no police. Oh, but you've got to, haven't you? I mean, it's all got to come out. Where he got it, who he spent it on, getting engaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely you're going to stand by your fiancé in his hour of need. You can't leave him like this. Can't I? You just watch me, mate. You're not going till the police arrive. You get away from that door. I can't see the police. Look, Harold, here's the ring back. Now, keep me out of it, there's a good boy. I don't want to see the police. Why ever not? You're joking, he's the fifth one this year. Look, <laughs> apart from the ring and a few hot dinners, that's all I've had out of the poor old devil. Look, you know the score. I don't know what you mean. It's my living. Well, I will try and keep you out of it, but I cannot promise. Oh, thanks, you're a doll. Look, tell him I'm sorry when he's better. Oh, he's quite a nice old man, really, isn't he? Who would have thought it, though? Bonkers. Yeah. It could have happened while we were, uh... It could have easily. No. Right. <laughs> I ought to get danger money, the chances are, take. Ta-da. Oh, keep him away from the West End. He's too easy, poor old devil. Ian, you better get the ambulance as well. Yes, I will. Cheerio. Ta-da. Here. You got five bob for my taxi? Yeah, all right, here. Oh. Now, don't forget, keep me out of it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, come on. Let's get all this clobber off here. Oh, look. I've creased up your new suit with that thing. I didn't hurt your mouth, did I? With no. that gag. No. Here, come, come, come on. You better come and sit down. Oh, you, you must be a bit shaky. But it was best to find out now rather than later, Dad, wasn't it? I'll get you a drink. Here you are. You get this down, you. It's my best brandy, Cordon Bleu. Look, I don't want you to think that I'm proud of what I have done, Dad. There's no fool like an old fool, is there? Oh, I don't know. I've been had myself before now. And Dad, I got the ring back. It is a lovely ring, Dad. How much did you give for it? Seven and six. How much? <laughs> Seven and six. Down the market. It's pace. Well, God blimey, I'm not as daft as that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you crafty old devil! <laughs> you live and learn, don't you? <laughs> the next one had better look out for herself. Still, you know, apart from that, I had quite a nice time. Made a nice break. Yeah, it's very nice at the Savoy. Lovely room. And the service. They take the bones off the fish for you, you know. Do they really? And they, they don't touch it with their fingers at how all. Do I? I don't know how they do it. They get these two knives, you see. Uh, uh, there, let me show you. It's oh. marvellous to watch them. Go on. They get one in one hand. Yes. Yeah, well, do they leave the fishes out in? You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son, with Uther Joyce as Madge. Written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, adapted for radio by Gail Pedrick, and produced by Bobby J.
That was the last of the present series of Steptoe and Son.